So today I'm at a Cold War Air Base just near Oxford in the UK and I've come up here with my gimbal and a Bow M so we can take an uninterrupted ride and run through an overview of some of its features. The fact that I can set this video running whilst driving the scooter is some indication of how stable this thing is. If you offer people a way to travel that is more convenient, more fun, more efficient, everyone wants that. The fundamental issue we found, these vehicles are based on a folding child's toy. And when you ride them, you can feel it. No amount of engineering can fix the physics. With the fold and the tubes, it's, it's all just too flimsy. You have to create something fundamentally different. You have to start by getting rid of the fold and creating a completely solid, high strength, unibody chassis. This is literally at the heart of everything Bow. It's Bow's absolute unique feature. Think of it a bit like the Dyson Cyclone. The problem vacuums had was that the bags would clog and lose suction. Dyson couldn't fix that by creating a better bag. They had to get rid of the bag altogether. Now, obviously, scooters don't need suction. We see the main function of the scooter as being an incredible ride. Now, I do understand some e-scooters are optimized for portability. Some are optimized for just outright speed. Bo is optimized to have the most precise, most confidence-inspiring, most enjoyable ride of any scooter on Earth. That feeling of total solidity, total dependability, it's amazing and it's completely unique to Bo. The key thing is that rather than constantly adjusting my body weight to the vehicle hopping about, I can just relax, enjoy the ride, shift my body weight wherever feels most comfortable rather than wherever necessary to keep myself safe. For us, the difference is so profound. It's the decider on whether we're happy to ride these vehicles or not. We tried every model out there. We started Xiaomi, we went Segway, Kagoo, Dualtron, Nami. We even had a Boosted or three. We found the same basic problem everywhere. The fundamental construction of these vehicles makes us feel unsteady and vulnerable on the road. Now that is fine for enthusiast riders. However, if you want to enjoy every little journey, if you want that Porsche 911 feeling of total control, precision, responsive handling, it's just not good enough. And that's where riding Bow, based on the Monaco chassis, is like nothing else in the world. Once we created the Monaco chassis and Bo had this unique, solid foundation to build on, it opened up a whole new world of opportunities. Now, our background is car design, car engineering. So naturally, we thought about that in terms of the benefits that you expect from a car, but that no one had even considered applying to a scooter. It's completely normal for even a basic car to have power steering, lane keeping. But the scooters we rode always felt like the opposite. They always felt like they were working against you as a rider. And it does make sense. With the smaller wheels, scooters are vulnerable to bumps and dips in the road, unsettling the ride. So the driver assistance we wanted was a system to protect our riders from that. It took hundreds, literally hundreds of prototypes. The outcome is a patented device that we call Safe Steer. If you've never ridden a scooter before, Safe Steer will just surprise you with how easy it is to get started. But if you've been riding a scooter, that is when Safe Steer will really blow your mind. As soon as you've experienced it, other scooters feel like pushing a shopping trolley with a broken caster wheel. It's such a surprise to ride a scooter where it feels like it totally has your back, like it's looking out for you. I mean, look, it's why I'm able to ride along, one-handed, relaxed, chatting to you. I'm not worried about Bo letting me down. Another example is that all the scooters we rode were a complete security nightmare. Using a D-lock around a scooter frame always felt like trying to pick up spaghetti with one of the claw games at an arcade. There's just no good way to snare around that scrawny neck. And you could completely forget using a cable lock. Scooter just slips straight out. Now, the solution that some people developed was a handcuff lock. But frankly, who wants to ride everywhere looking like they're on their way to a fetish party? And again, this is where the moniker have created an opportunity for us. We were able to mount a purpose-built, forged metal pair of locking hoops. And best of all, rather than having to mount them down on the treadboard in the dirt and the wet where you have to bend down to get them, we were able to mount it exactly where you want it. The perfect height for a railing or a bike stand. Now all of that is great, but the real money shot? When you're done locking, we didn't want this hoop to ruin the aesthetics of your bow. So they rotate neatly out of the way and are fastened automatically with a little magnetic latch. 
it's a delight. Now, my personal favorite part of the bow development was power. Something people often only discover when they first ride on a Xiaomi or a Segway is that reaching a hill can mean you end up pushing. Just think about how stupid this is for a moment. You end up transporting the vehicle that is meant to be transporting you. And I'm not talking about the sort of killer hills where even a car would grumble. I'm talking about the normal hills, the railway bridges and canal crossings that you come across on any ride. Now, of course, there are high power sports scooters out there, the Dualtrons and Kagoos and Namis. But even that didn't give us what we wanted. They always feel set up for racing. So the power is super spiky and twitchy, and it really only kicks in when you get up to 40, 45. That's as fast as we ever want to go. At Bow, what we love is deep, torquey power. I think this is what car reviewers call grunt. It's that surge when you pull away. It's the feeling when you get to a hill and the vehicle climbs harder, dips its shoulder in rather than slowing down. We scoured the world of motors for something that had these characteristics. We found nothing. In the end, our only option was to develop the Bow Power System. That is the Bow Power motor, motor controller and battery, a fully matched homogenous system designed with one aim, giving you all the power you want completely under your control. For anyone expecting it to pull like a Segway, it's such a surprise, like a boxer's fist in a cashmere glove. Absolutely awesome. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> As you're undoubtedly starting to realize, what was initially a mission to fix the sloppy ride and dynamics of a scooter quickly got out of hand. Great lighting is one of the most basic functions of a good road going vehicle. And yet the headlamps on vehicles like the Boosteds and the Segways that we bought felt like trying to light up an entire hillside with a single candle, a tiny amount of light and not even pointed in the direction we wanted to see. Importantly, we didn't think it was acceptable to increase the power and the speed unless the lighting was good enough to illuminate any obstacle, even flat out in the middle of the night. Of course, that was only part of the story. For 50 years in car design, a single light, the headlamp, performed two functions, seeing and being seen. Suddenly in the last 10 years, car designers realized that you could separate out these two functions, create what's known as a daytime running lamp, the DRL, an identity light, which is both pretty and separates out the function of being seen. Back in the day, it was only weirdo Volvos whose lights were on the whole time. Well, again, the monocurve gave us a unique opportunity to do the same for the first time on a vehicle at this scale. This is why Bo has this iconic cyber scooter feature, the floating halo light above the front wheel, a light feature that can be seen from all angles by all road users. And the difference as a rider is profound. Nothing makes you feel more secure as a rider than watching a car positively stop at the junction because they've seen the bow halo. Developing the lights also gave us an opportunity to hide two of my favorite Easter eggs. The first is our startup animation. Because the bow halo has 99 individually controlled LEDs, we were able to animate the startup sequence. It's Bo's way of saying, hello, I'm ready for a ride. The second is a tongue in cheek nod to our previous careers with Williams Motorsport. When you pull the brake, the rear light flashes like the regen on a Formula One car. The thing I love most about each of these unique bow innovations is they're not sort of odd hidden features that you'll only use very occasionally. I love them because they're so inherent to using the vehicle. It would literally be impossible to go for a ride without benefiting from most of them. What that means is that every ride becomes an opportunity for Bo to delight you, to prove itself more convenient or fun or useful than the alternatives. Amazingly, as a vehicle category, scooters have so far only appealed to about 1.5% of the population. That means that tens of millions of people who could ride regularly are missing out on the single biggest life upgrade I've ever experienced. That is this amazing frictionless travel. Even today, when they're relatively well known, riding a scooter in percentage terms makes you an early adopter. Being able to go anywhere at any time of day without the obligations of fueling or traffic or parking it feels sort of like a superpower. The Bow mission really is to create a family of products that meets and beats the expectations of a group of people who never even imagined that they could use a scooter every day. Obviously, to stop this video ending up like a Lord of the Rings trilogy, there's dozens of things I have not talked about. For any outstanding questions, we're hello at bow.world. Or just send me a note, say how much you've enjoyed the ride.
Yeah.